Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the session on vaccination availability post COVID. Uh, this is, of course, a very topical issue right now. And I would just request all attendees and all the speakers, if possible, uh, we can be on mute until uh, we have um, uh, a specific person who's speaking. So if all of us can be on mute, thank you. Great. OK, so uh, before we begin, I would just like to touch upon the fact that I think our session is one session amongst all the sessions, which is uh, which is definitely more future looking because vaccination is something uh, which is of a question which nobody has really been able to answer at the moment, especially when it comes to COVID. And it's something all of us are trying to figure out. And uh, although we have a lot of experts on today's panel, uh, we ourselves don't have all the answers. Uh, some of you might have come to the show. But what we talk to this show is often different domains who are working in more of the information side of things. We have to work in a community. So I'm just introducing our family, which is a very eminent family. For that, I just like to share with all of you. Hello. I feel all the screens have frozen, and I don't see Priya anymore. Am I audible? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Oh, here she's back. Uh, can all can of you see um, my screen? Hello? Can Hello? everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. Yes, pretty Hi, can you hear me? Okay, yes, great. I can. So I hope everyone can see my screen as well. Lovely. Uh, so this is definitely a new platform we're all trying to figure out here. So um, I just like to uh, start off by talking about the panelists uh, and all of us here right now. Uh, my name is Priya Prakash, and I am the founder and CEO of an organization called HealthSetGo. HealthSetGo is an organization based in India where we work on the health of students and make sure that children of and we make sure that we are impacting the education system and getting health education in every household and into the minds of every child so that we can have a healthier India and a healthier world in the future. Uh, today we have with us for eminent panelists. Uh, uh, first, I'd like to start off with Deepthi. So, Deepthi is the founder and CEO of Smart Health. She is based in the um, we also have people who try to Singapore. who is the chief of the So, Priya, if you can hear us, uh, your. Priya, if you can, Priya, if you can hear us, uh, uh, your internet is extremely scratchy and you're not audible at all. At least to me, I'm assuming. Uh, the same for the panelists, and you have dropped off. Okay, I can hear you guys. Actually, I can hear. Okay, you're back now, and you're very clear now. Okay, great. Maybe it's a screen sharing problem, so I can yeah. maybe not share the screen. We can go without that. Uh, so I was yeah. just introducing all of you. Can you hear me now? Loud and clear, Priya. Okay, great. So uh, I'll start again. I'll just introduce all of you quickly again. Um, so I was introducing, uh, so today on the panel, we have Mr. Scott, who's the editor-in-chief of the Journal of Health Communications. Uh, we have Deepthi, uh, who is with us, who is uh, based now in the Netherlands, and she is the founder and CEO of Starfold. We have Siddharth, uh, who is the founder and director of Aura. And we have Preeti, who is the founder of Stripe High, based in Singapore. So welcome, all of you, to the session. Uh, and today the topic is vaccination availability uh, post-COVID. 
but before i get into that i really like to touch upon the current situation right now and what we are really uh, into uh, when it comes to vaccination availability and uh, in the world if you look at how many uh, projects are being there worked upon on vaccinations there are more than 100 projects currently being worked upon when it comes to vaccinations a lot of the projects have also gone into the clinical trial phase now and the kind of timelines that we are setting for vaccinations have been really aggressive so typically the vaccination that has been developed the fastest in the world till now is has taken us 5 years so compared to 5 years what we are looking at for covid is actually 18 months of course uh, 5 years is the fastest vaccine and vaccines take a lot longer so i'd like to go here to deepthi first and uh, deepthi um, if you can touch upon from your experience how is it that we are planning to release a vaccine in 18 months that sounds unprecedented um are there some innovations is there some of uh, you know a uh, use of data right now which can tell us why this is being uh, possible and why this timeline has been given to the world right now yeah hello can you hear me good priya yes yes i can i can okay So thank you very much for this opportunity and I love to thank everybody else on this panel as well um and uh, Frank as well for um, arranging everything and being so flexible to the last every minute uh, available. So um I will give a small uh, idea of what we are doing Spark uh, uh what we do at Spark Health is we are uh, driven to bringing um together the most proven and the best in class big data and ai based solutions uh by creating an ecosystem of partners and providing the most complete solutions and the most effective solutions to healthcare so uh what we have is a very close working relationship with all our partners we mentor them we um help them close their series a and b rounds we also um uh invest in them ourselves and um and introduce them um through uh introduce their sec- uh, technology in healthcare so we also work with the hospitals the municipalities with universities and in the commercial sector of course with a lot of um CROs and uh, uh pharmaceutical companies and over time we have built up an ecosystem from the United States Europe and India and um precisely for covid what we are doing is we have already built uh, a database a registry where we can collect all kinds of um patient data uh their medical data their healthcare data their logistic their screening data their contact tracing data all of that on um a complete registry for the maharashtra government of healthcare officials and um what uh, we want to um so what our our platform is something that allow uh, and um ensures um uh that data is collected very much in detail both in length and breadth so it's not just enough to collect um data that is uh just the medical data what are the treatments available but we also need to have data on uh how many ventilators are there what is the uh you know what is the systems preparedness so i was talking to priya just before connecting and uh from our vaccination uh you know availability perspective how do we create that we have uh two points that i want our um team to consider is what can we optimize clinical trials that's what we are aiming for and optimizing clinical trials mean um we address both the quality of data that is captured Uh, it has to be very uh, reliable the data has to be reliable it should be free of errors and confusion and um it has to be high quality data as well and the second aspect in optimizing clinical trials is the time to conclusion how can we speed that up and that we can do when we provide the technology for a collaborative platform that ensures data is right from the start standardized it's optimized it is you uh, reusable it is interoperable with other systems and um the other aspect of um important i think to our discussion which we can contribute is um measuring the prepare- preparedness of the governments the in uh, in terms of the infrastructure the consumables uh, there's something 
very crucial for the preparation index, not just our factor, but also the preparation in the index, which which uh, explains uh, to the regulatory bodies, administrators, how prepared are we as a government equipped to handle this outbreak? Mm, it's not just about collecting data on medicines, but also how what how is our health force? You know, there are. Uh, as a pandemic that we see of this scale, we have four four phases that we are going through. First phase is locking down and collecting as much data as possible, making sure the data is accurate in the right order. We are asking the right questions and collecting the right uh, information. And the second aspect, the second phase is when we say we start looking at it and seeing. Um, how prepared are we to tackle this crisis as a system? And uh, how, what is the healthcare workforce? How healthy are they? You know, what is the availability of uh, medications, of testing kits, of supply chains, of ambulances? Of uh, how how do we determine where are the red spots? And you know, how stable is it to go from red to orange to green? And um, the the third aspect is then slowly um, uh, or reopening it and monitoring, uh, which will which is based on WHO guidelines. And the fourth aspect, of course, is developing the vaccines and um, the drugs that can actually address the problem. So, so uh, I think we, uh, just want to, we are tackling. Uh, yeah, so uh, Deepti just wanted to come in here because you said that we need to develop the vaccine um, as sort of the third and the fourth phase combined. So uh, Preeti, I would just like to come to you and ask you about, you know, what is the race? Um, I mean, currently we're in a race where a lot of companies are trying to develop uh, the vaccine. So can you just shed some light on uh, how public-private partnerships can play a role here? Hello, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, yes. Yes. A uh, very good afternoon to all of you. And um, well, uh, Deepthi just shared the various struggles, the, the challenges that we are facing and the, the kind of data that uh, we are in the race to collect in order uh, to, to uh, you know, kind of develop a pandemic uh, vaccine for this uh, pandemic, which has infected over 9 million people and killed more than 400,000 uh, people globally and has devastated the global economy. So governments, big pharma companies, firms are spending billions of dollars uh, with very limited chances of success. Historically, as you said, uh, just 6% of vaccine candidates end up making it to the market. Often, uh, after a year-long process, testing shows that and when the tests when the testing shows that product is um, good to go in the market and showing remarkable results, only then uh, the investments come in place. But the uh, 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 the biggest challenge then is the low success rate of the vaccine. More than 100 vaccines are being developed worldwide, but only a handful of those have advanced to human tri trials, which is actually the real indicator uh, of uh, safety and efficacy and the stage where most of the vaccines get washed out. So even the very thought that within 10, 12 to 18 months, we will have a vaccine, um, it's a, a very unrealistically optimistic view. Um, yet, uh, the, 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 this is a new pa new paradigm, uh, a pandemic paradigm where we are focused on speed and uh, and, and every every company is out to take the risk, and it is a risk worth taking because because of the sheer you know the the, uh, the speed of uh, damage that it is causing to humanity itself. Um, so companies uh, like Johnson and Johnson, Glaxo, uh, Smith K line, uh, they have uh, uh, they have collaborated with the government um, uh, uh, to make the do to make the doses uh, you know uh, accessible by the people. Um, once because once the uh, vaccine is out, how will it actually be accessible by the masses? That is one of the largest concerns that people face. 
uh, one of the companies in um, india the indian uh, biotechnology company serum institute of india um which is the world's largest vaccine maker by number of doses uh is is planning looking at uh, manufacturing 60 million doses and has indicated pricing as low as 1000 rupees uh, which is less than 15 us dollars um the global demand is going to be vast and um, and even if a, a vaccine is developed and it cannot reach everybody um that's uh, we need it to be a, a reachable for, to the masses and for this again uh, companies like jnj uh, are partnering with government a uh, coalition for epidemic preparedness mm. innovations cepi a consortium supported by private comp donors as well as governments like united kingdom canada belgium norway uh, uh, they have raised around 915 million of the 2 billion that they anticipate to sp uh, spend to accelerate testing and build specialized production plants for at least 3 corona virus uh, vaccine candidates so the key is uh, fast and safe uh, you know making the uh, uh, vaccines fast and uh, they should be approved yeah now uh, uh, yeah so uh, so i just wanted to say that you know the fact that uh, the companies that you are mentioning right now uh, the their collaboration with the government so where do you see that coming in as well so a lot of these companies are actually collaborating like jsk we said uh, like we said jnj uh, companies big conglomerates like uh, uh, you know uh, bill uh, and melinda gates they have uh, uh, they are funding immensely to uh, vaccine development projects uh, so the pa partnership uh, between private and public sector is key at this point to uh, uh, to help each other uh, to uh, you know develop the uh, vaccines and bring them to market expedite the process and make it approachable and reachable to everyone um uh, one of the important factor also is the basic trust of the people and keeping their optimism alive that yes there is a solution and we will come out with the solution and together we will uh, you know uh, uh, people should not lose hope but then this cannot be so fast that uh, the vaccine that comes and uh, people yeah. yeah and and then yeah, yeah. Uh, the on the yeah. vaccine yeah i know so, i think uh, uh, it's a bit of a trust issue yeah. that goes on with uh, you know a lot of people when it comes to vaccinations as well so that segues really well into scott um you know who's with us today to talk about how the communication has been regarding the vaccines in the media in the journals being the editor in chief of one of the journals so scott can you tell us a bit about that uh and how has the communication been because everybody has a lot of anxiety and stress still about the current situation and the future Scott I think you're on mute right now Thank you Priya uh and and um great introduction and I was just saying to thank Priti for really serving up a very nice presentation on the challenges that we face with the 100 plus vaccines in the works and despite the fact that we have um multiple uh, companies and government supporting them we are far away from a vaccine making it to market uh with the safety and efficacy and quality that we may expect so um I think there's going to be some time and um my role as editor of the journal of health communication we have been um looking uh both at articles and and empirical evidence supporting the um the challenges that we face with vaccination but secondarily I've been involved with a project with Wilton Park out of the UK uh for an commonwealth office and what's been most interesting there we've held um one dialogue we have another one actually today um looking uh on the idea of vaccine literacy uh just because people have heard about a vaccine and we might have seen eradication of smallpox from the planet and very close on polio uh that doesn't mean just because you have a vaccine in a vial that is going to be taken up by the public and there's been a few things just uh top line that I'll mention and if I have a moment I'll slow show one slide uh the evidence really suggests that um 
uh, the media environment is exacerbating the vaccination and vaccination policies. It's wedging what we call a wedge issue, which puts people at different sides of the spectrum, whether they're for vaccines or against vaccines, rather than for overall solidarity. Two, it's permitting these vaccine opponents, uh, pot- potentially via social media, but also in interpersonal communication and with groups uh, to to wall off themselves and look like they're a mainstream group. So they're adding credibility, unfortunately. And then the last thing in terms of the horse race area is the vaccine race. We don't know if it's going to be an injectable, an oral, a nasal, a skin patch. There's all sorts of ways delivering the vaccine, notwithstanding do we need it once, twice, what's the efficacy, uh, of population and so forth. So there's a lot of challenges. And um, I'm not really exactly sure which ones uh, will be the biggest ones. But what I can show you is the fact that we have some evidence that we just received over the weekend. If I can share my screen, see how this one works. I will show um, one slide. Uh, it lets me. Uh, and this, this is just very quick, if um, everyone can see. We just did a survey uh, last Is this all right? Scott, I think her network is patchy. You want to just go on? Okay, uh, no, sure. I was thinking that there might be an issue. This is a one slide, and then I'll stop if you can no, see. She's, she's if, gone off, so you can carry on. If oh, you can't hear me, then that's okay. So here's the situation that we looked at. We asked a question. Uh, uh, with 19 countries, if a vaccine for COVID-19 is proven safe and effective and is available, I will take it. And while 87% of the population would in China, um, India is about 72%. And this even breaks down further between those with uh, education or not, where the higher educated are more apt and the lower. Uh, and that breaks down to like 70 versus 88. Of course, it's, it's um, measured for... Uh, uh, population base. But it, this is a big challenge. We should be seeing everyone up, you know, where Brazil and Singapore are. Uh, you might not even see this for measles uh, or others, but if we're here, that means we have a lot of doubters. So uh, the conclusion I take from this slide is how do we move people from the right to the left? How do we get this vaccine acceptance number higher? How do we build, you know, trust and faith in our, our science and medical system? So um, I'll pause and turn back and, you know, hopefully we'll have a chance for a little bit of dialogue on this. Sure. I think that's a very poignant point that, you know, um, there needs to be a lot of vaccine literacy, what we call vaccine literacy uh, when it comes to our population. But Siddharth, if I have to move on to you, um, you, know, you, you do a lot of work in communication as well. And you really know the pulse of the people and how they are responding currently to COVID and what are their opinions. I think Scott has taken a very uh, data-based approach on that. But, you know, why don't you shed some light on what's going on right now? What are the emotions coming through? Um, no one knows when the vaccine will come out so you know what is the pulse of the people can you can you tell us a bit about that uh, uh, hi Priya and the rest of the panelists good evening and it's great to see you all here again uh, so uh, Priya, uh, the way I see it and I'm speaking uh, as a professional who's in the event experience and communication space and also perhaps being representative of what I would call the common man uh, unfortunately there's no playbook in the world for COVID right I mean there's no uh, there's there no one has it nobody saw it coming nobody knew uh, you know what this is all about you know uh, so uh, i think i think uh, technically the government and, and i'm saying government across the world is struggling okay struggling just not on healthcare struggling not on you know dealing with the crisis but if i think the moot point uh, to answer your question priya is that just dealing with how to communicate and, and what to communicate, okay? How much of information is good information? How much of information is the fear information, okay? Absolutely. How much of information is going to cause uh, concern? How much of information is going to get people packing the bags and going from one state to the other or one country to the other, you know? I was in a, you know, uh, uh, conversation yesterday with some few friends and, you know, uh, they literally had a world map around them and they were like, okay, which country has the least amount of cases, you know, and what's the <laughs> migration policy to go there, you know? Yes. So I think, I think uh, commun- from a communication viewpoint, uh, you know, uh, there has been definitely a lack of transparency, 
uh, in the communication and that could possibly be because uh, people don't have the answers themselves including uh, right. somebody like Scott who is doing the research who is in the forefront of activity right uh, you know and we did hear uh, Dipti talk about what's happening in Mumbai as an example and uh, Priya touched upon Preeti touched upon what's happening in Singapore so there is just no data to uh, verify anything and that's what we are seeing the biggest challenge the lack of communication or clarity in communication which is only causing more panic and fear so people i mean i've been down with a little bit of a cold over the weekend a little bit of flu and you know uh, folks at home have literally you know put me into one room and uh, sort of <laughs> you know lock me up because uh, they, they are unsure whether this is just the normal flu or is that the onset uh, of uh, the sea uh, world right. of the covid you know so right. i think the 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 fear because of uh, the proper the lack of proper communication is definitely been a concern from where i see it here yes i think uh, also you know uh, the who has taken up some innovative approaches partnering with facebook partnering with tiktok partnering with instagram really to reach out to the masses and to reach out uh, in terms of their communication to all kinds of age groups as well you know because there are a lot of young children uh, who are also worried about their future they have never lived in a reality like this uh, you know new parents who who have to take care of their children at home uh, people who have to go to work but now are under lockdown there's been a lot of impact i think on the you know so called common man uh, who uh, you know and all of us are looking for answers and we really haven't been able to get those answers and i think that is a huge part of um, you know the confidence metric what scott was talking about where to go is are vaccinations even you know trustworthy if and when they come so scott just to quickly go back to you um you know let's look at the post vaccination scenario right let's look at the fact that uh, we have found the vaccination so do you really think i mean what percentage of people do you think will actually be takers and what percentage of people do you think will actually not respond well even if we all work hard on the vaccine uh, any opinions on that were you were you asking me <laughs> Yes, God. Yes, yes. Since you have had um, a lot of that, well, um, it would be nice to say that there is um, magic that if you just give people information that they're going to make decisions, and they'll make the decisions that you would like them to make. Shall we say, as the provider of information? But I said, said I've gave some good points. Is that it's not just about the type of communication. but it's the the dosage so it's message and dosage we have to get the message right we have to get it right in the the level of people's understanding in the local language uh with um people that they can trust and the trust question i think is the biggest question we've also looked at this from a data driven approach um you know oftentimes people trust uh family members or uh community members more than they would clearly from the government uh we also have been looking at businesses people want to work uh they need to work uh it seems that businesses that give information uh of large employers that they know are are um evidence based that uh people mm-hmm. tend to follow those much better so we're looking at ways of activating global organizations that have local reach so chambers okay. of commerce you know, so that's mm-hmm. kind of the um the 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 thinking uh and also you know we all have or many of us have academic cats too so how do we begin to teach this in universities and get this all the way to schools as you do so well so we have to start early and we have to think generation generationally if we lose the covid vaccine uh confidence then what happens to measles uh, mumps rubella uh polio and we need to close the gap and others yeah. so i yeah. think we really need to look at it in a broad way Yes, uh I completely agree. I think also, you know, Preeti, if I can uh, throw this back at you as well, uh you know, I think it requires a lot of inspiring leadership to communicate the message. We've seen a lot of world leaders trying to communicate uh the same message of, you know, around COVID what Scott is really talking about. Can you really uh you know, tell us about what what role leadership plays, the strong leaders play? in communicating all these messages to people about vaccinations about covid can you touch upon that for us
Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, please. I can hear you now. So, uh, uh, yeah, you were on mute actually. Now we can. So, when adversity strikes and something which is, which hits survivor, uh, which causes fear, which causes panic, and where people fear losing their near dear ones, uh, people from their community, from their country, different countries, then, uh, then is the time they start questioning the mere existence of themselves. They start trying to find out the meaning in the lives of, of what is it that am I that I am doing? What is it that I can contribute to the world? And perhaps these are those strong questions that people start asking. in situations like this more than ever before so we've seen this particular situation reminds me of world war 2 um uh, when uh, the uh, you know um, uh, the automakers they started making tanks and uh, 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 those weapons to fight in, at that point of time to support uh, uh, the war now companies like Louis Vuitton, you know, um, uh, Ford, GE, Tesla, all of them are trying to contribute in which, whatever way, by whether it's by making masks, or by gloves, or ventilators, different ways. And it is interesting that people who uh, people are find uh, you are uh, we are finding leaders emerging from all strata, um, housewives coming up and driving with huge projects, uh, helping people those migrant workers for example to garner support from them, from uh, cooking uh, breads the chapatis for them, uh, to. Uh, 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 you know, collecting funds for them. So, what I um, um, mean to say, uh, and those who are bigger influences, uh, who are say uh, working in uh, the uh, Bollywood, in Bollywood, Hollywood, and those are larger influences. All of them. Uh, have come up and they've they realized the responsibility of giving back to the society, and which a lot of people yeah. are taking from the hint of uh, from. So uh, what I mean to say is, uh, these are those times uh, when we see genuine effort coming from all. from everyone and, and, and not just specifically uh, people at um, who are leading the organizations but we are seeing leaders emerging from everywhere and uh, i think that is the that is one of the good things about situations that causes uh, the crisis uh, the after effects of crisis that we start thinking of humanity as a whole and try to give yes. back more. very uh, well said preeti thank you so much for that uh, that's truly really inspiring yes there has been a lot of leadership that has been taken up by uh, so many people uh, leaders have emerged but now uh, you know coming to the fact that vaccination might be available within 18 months um so that i just want to ask you a question that you know there might end up being a very normal our situation here whereas when the vaccination comes out who gets access to it so you know, we are seeing a lot of it uh, in the society right now uh, there are social economic differences uh, you know where people might actually get access or they won't get access so what is your uh, thought process on that i mean how do you think it's going to play out uh like i said uh, you know priya and uh, you right you you quoted me on that i see the noah's ark situation okay i see a mad scramble happening we are already seeing a scramble happening for you know a uh, testing we are seeing a mad scramble happening for hospital beds okay we are going to be seeing a mad scramble happen whenever the vaccine comes out okay and this is again going to be a global phenomenon okay uh, it is we are going to see uh, people lining up you know we are going to be seeing people elbowing out we are going to see people trying to buy themselves out you know we are going to see that and that's the harsh reality you know uh, it is going to be uh, each person for themselves and probably each person for their families themselves and then anybody else okay because uh, everybody believes that uh, that's going to be uh, you know just not uh, the vaccine but using and indian word the amrit right once you get the amrit you know you forever are, you are uh, invincible <laughs> yeah you are invincible you are going to be you know uh, alive for you know eternity so that's the way i see the ma uh, match scramble going to happen uh, for the vaccine uh, unfortunately priya and the only way that can be done is you know goes back to my earlier point of communication 
you know uh, and how do they go about distributing it i don't have an answer i don't think anybody has an answer and thinking that far i think right now the thinking is you know uh, let's get the vaccine out and we'll deal with you know how we are going to distribute the vaccine you know later but i think this is where uh, the governments need to be ahead of the curve because eventually at some point we are going to discover the vaccine right absolutely and when you are going to discover uh, the vaccine uh, sorry uh, sorry yeah i was saying you know the point you brought up what are that you have to be ahead of the curve and um, and ultimately it's going to you know the vaccine will come out so i think ipti just a, a final word from you on this uh, how can actually data help the governments understand where to give this vaccine improve the accessibility of the vaccine once it's come out just a final word from you on this you know that once it's been discovered uh, how can we use some innovation to make sure that it reaches everyone so uh, the way i see it is you know uh, let's first get the data i don't know if there is enough data available to do yes, and like uh, we can uh, we can come in on this actually uh, so, if we is able to find the data the world's going to be find, able to find the data you yeah. think the logic right i mean uh, we really need it uh, we are working yeah, with the uh, uh, health ministry we are working with the health officials in provinces in maharashtra for instance yeah. what we are doing is we have already established a database and uh, what we are collecting is longitudinal uh, as well as uh, um, medical data healthcare data their uh, contact screening data um their uh, you know primary secondary tertiary contact screening what is the cocktail of medications people are getting what and from the data that is collected which is highly reliable uh, because uh, because we are trying to put it in without any errors given our technology can afford to do that and then at the same time and this is uh, our platform is being used by the who for the solidarity project it is being used uh, worldwide uh, you know all academic hospitals and everything okay, I, i think the point is you know how are you going to no, no. yeah just let me come to my data. points uh, i yeah. get your question and yeah. it is a very good question because it really uh, addresses the crux of the matter and once you have data yeah once you have the vaccine in place you still need to go back to your data and ensure that the regulator people are having an overview of how the red spots have gone into you know orange into green spots what is the availability there what is the supply chain how what is our system how strong it is to ensure that the people who need it are getting the vaccines as well so there needs to be a transparency at the regulatory level on what they see and how they can uh, ensure that the people are getting the um, the solutions uh, it is accessible to the common man as you say it and um, but we also need to go back constantly and monitor so if i have given vaccine to 100 people in a community i still need to go back and still need to collect data and see what is the efficacy of it if we have missed somebody how come we miss those people and for all that it is all absolutely data driven and this is really causing an attitudinal shift in our regulators in our healthcare uh, you know directorate of health services in 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 all the ministry you know uh, we have to think differently we have to innovate uh, we have to uh, ensure that these processes are in place and we need data for all that and it is coming in it has it has to be collected on a robust platform as we offer and then you also need somebody to give the insights from the data that is collected to the officials okay. so you see i think your organization is definitely doing that kind of work on ground like spark health is doing that um kind of work collecting the data and you know putting it out there which is great um and i think that all the pieces have to come together the data the communication the uh, the leadership of uh, you know different organizations as well as world leaders coming together to combat this pandemic um i you know in the interest of time i would just like to uh, you know sort of draw a bit of a conclusion here on our discussion of course we don't know when the vaccine is going to come out but what we do know is that as a as a planet we are standing together and we are going to try to combat the situation the way it is now and um, you know just hope and pray that yes once once the vaccine comes out we'll be able to make sure that everybody has equal access to it so with that being said um, 
I'd really like to thank the panelists uh, today uh, with us. Thank you so much, Scott, Siddharth, Deepthi, Preeti, all of you are experts on this uh, on this matter. And uh, I would really urge, uh, you know, after this, hopefully we can all put ourselves together and probably, um, you know, come out with a document which we can circulate back uh, as action points, back to Horasis, back to all the people who are in this discussion. So, um, you know, thank you so much for being here. And I really hope that we find the vaccine soon and we can combat this pandemic. Thank you so much. Amen thank you very much. Okay, well done. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for moderating and thank you to the rest of the panel. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think Scott uh, messages. So yes, we can definitely collaborate and make it make sure it goes further. Yes. Good. Absolutely. The great ideas we need to do that. I'm hopeful we can do it together. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. 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 Bye.